Antonio Glover. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Councilman Glover. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chair. From the seventh district, we had Councilman Torrance. Committee Thank members. You, Mr. Chair. Um, Councilman Torrance. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Can you hear me? Okay. All right, I, I didn't hear. Um, from the sixth district, the vice president of city council, Councilwoman Middleton. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We have Nikki Thompson from President Mosby's office. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Also, we have Marguerite Kern, who is the great staff person of this committee. Uh, we also have committee member Mr. John Bullock from the 9th District. Thank you, Mr. Chair. From the mayor's office, Ms. Sophia, I don't want to chop your name up, but I can say the first name very well. So, Ms. Sophia, could you introduce yourself, please? Sophia Gabriel Hewitt. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I appreciate it. This is a legislative oversight hearing for Baltimore City's Children and Youth Fund. The city charter requires that the hearing be held by the end of March 2022. Representatives from the Baltimore City Children Youth Fund will come before the committee to give an update on the status and activities associated with the fund. I'm now going to turn this hearing over to Mr. Davon Love. And Mr. Love, you can introduce your uh, uh, members of the youth children youth fund. Thank you. Hey, this is uh, Councilman Zeke Cohen. I'm here too. Oh, I'm sorry, Councilman. Councilman no. Zeke Cohen, member of the committee from the Thanks, first sir. district. I apologize. All right, greetings, Chair Committee. This is Dave on Love, Community Engagement Lead for the Baltimore City Children and Youth Fund. Um, I've come before this committee in the past, and as the chairman um, mentioned, that this is a part of the statutory requirement for the youth fund to present the updates um, on the progress of the youth fund. But additionally, it's a part of the youth fund's values in terms of transparency and oversight, providing the public an opportunity to really understand the work that's happening with the Baltimore City Children and Youth Fund. Um, as the youth fund is moving into um, its more permanent structure, and as staff begin to be onboarded, you're going to actually see, you know, less of me, um, and you're going to see more of other folks who will be, you know, part of the staff um, of the youth fund. Um, we're really fortunate because our first staff member, who is also the inaugural pre inaugural president um, of the youth fund, is Alicia Lee. Um, and so my presence really, I just wanted to make sure to provide a proper introduction. Uh, Ms. Alicia Lee has been um, the president of the youth fund for the past few weeks now. I've had the pleasure of working with her um, in this short time and, can, and look forward to continuing to work with her um, on the project of the youth fund, both continuing as a consultant and also as we transition um, to other work, continue to, to, to partner uh, with her in the youth fund. Um, and I wanted to make sure, um, given this is the committee um, that I've presented to on many occasions um, in combination with other staff members, just wanted to make a personal introduction um, and you know, just provide you all um, some just additional information about kind of where we were before and how we get to where we are now. So um, I'll turn it over um, to Alicia Lee. Um, I'm just gonna stick around if there's any additional like questions or just for support. Um, but, but Alicia is going to give the presentation that will update you all um, on the activities of the youth fund um, and will be the primary person answering questions. Thank you so much, Davon. Thank you for for that introduction and this transition over. And um, let's see, Ms. Brown, can we begin our presentation? And of course, giving greetings and a good evening to Councilman Stokes and to all the, co the council members this after this evening. Thank you. So I am about seven weeks in as the inaugural president of the Baltimore Children and Youth Fund, and my career has been entirely focused on young people and learning. And so I'm joining BCYF directly from the Maryland State Department of Education, where I worked as an education program supervisor for the Fine Arts Education Office. And in that role, I built um, a really exciting, vibrant professional learning communities and technical assistance um, that really supported educators 
through the transition through COVID and school closures and, and reopening, um, specifically looking at um, anti-racism, creative process, pedagogy, assessment. And so we're really proud of that work. I'm also joining you directly as a grassroots folk person myself. So I founded a, an organization, um, a grassroots organization, have led it for the past 10 years. So I'm excited to bring my youth development experience, of course, my experience from the education sector, and also, of course, my creativity and passion for Baltimore City. I'm a Baltimore native, and I'm just thrilled to be able to turn my attention hyper-locally and focus on the youth and communities of Baltimore City in my work. So I'm very thrilled and I'm excited to be a part of the BCYF team. So next slide, please. Just, I'd like to start tonight with an update on our board of directors. So as you know, just from past presentations, we always wanna start by thanking and extending that thanks to our transition board who did a lot of work to take BCYF Inc. from its beginning to where we are now. And now we have a set, a set of permanent board members. Um, in addition to that, I'm really excited, and those permanent board members are displayed for you here. In addition to that, I'm really excited to make, make you aware that those first steps to integrate young people onto the board of BCYF are happening. So we have a cabinet of about five young people, I believe is the number, who are working in the Avis, thank you, Davon, Avis Ransom Institute, which is our direct pipeline for youth into board service with BCYF. Young people there are exploring BCYF's history and function um, in the city. They're also learning about board member roles and fiduciary responsibilities and getting that introduction into the board structure of BCYF through trainings. Um, they also have started to attend committee meetings and I can, I can firmly say that um, they are asking the most intriguing and, and exciting questions in those meetings. Um, they have been really well prepared and we are excited for them to join um, their official board service. Um, they will be at the first board meeting in April um, to begin their official board service, which is really exciting um, and will help us to, of course, achieve our mission to be youth centric and youth, youth focused. So I come before you tonight, next slide please, to talk about our grant making. So we have some exciting pieces of grant making to share this evening, but I want to start by just making a review for some, um, and this may be new information to others, just talking about our grant making strategy at BCYF. So the grant making strategy includes direct investments into Baltimore-based youth serving organizations. In addition to investments in the infrastructure that sustains and supports Baltimore's grassroots organizations, we also have a strategy around collaborative funding. So an aligned grant making strategy that creates larger grant opportunities for youth serving organizations and for youth serving programming. And finally, deep investments in technical assistance and capacity building are also a key part of our grant making strategy. And that technical assistance piece is really critical because it is that lever that helps to eliminate barriers to funding for so many local grassroots organizations. It also helps us to strengthen the capacity of the youth sector in Baltimore City, both programmatically and operationally. It also will help to tighten the sense of community for local providers. So we hear this feedback both on a national scale and a local scale, but wanting to encourage collaboration and uh, collegiality amongst organizations and providers instead of competition. And finally, it is another opportunity for BCYF to commit to reaffirm our commitment to advance racial equity in the youth development and philanthropic sectors in Baltimore City. I'd like to present, next slide please, our plan for spending for spring 2022. We have $11 million to disperse across four portfolios. And this graph here um, gives that overview and I'll dive deeper into a few of these buckets. So first we have aligned grant making, which I will talk about in a moment, but this co-investment strategic action um, where we're working in collaboration with local funders. And we have aligned $2.5 million um, for aligned grant making. The second fund is the President's Fund, and these funds are dispersed in alignment with the mission, vision, and values of BCYF, and will prioritize sustaining and supporting the grassroots youth serving sector of Baltimore City. In the third bucket, we have the Community Technical Assistance 
And for there, you can see we have 2.5 million as well. And again, we're creating a model for technical assistance that really shifts the dynamics of grant making by empowering communities, uplifting youth voices, and strengthening grantee organizational and programmatic capacities to really ensure that the delivery of equitable and effective programming for youth is a part of every city region. And finally, the grassroots fund, $5 million there, and I'm gonna go into much more detail about the grassroots fund. Next slide, please. So first I'd like to start um, talking about the Aligned Grant Making Fund, where we are deploying $2.5 million to support the Baltimore Summer Funding Collaborative. And the Baltimore Summer Funding Collaborative, I'm sure as many of you know, is that partnership between public, private, and nonprofit organizations here in Baltimore City to support high quality summer programs that serve youth and children from low income backgrounds here in the city. And so while each funder in the collaborative has their own priorities, what we all share is one essential goal that we want to fund with a lot of equity and support different types of summer programs that keep students engaged throughout the summer, help to reduce the summer slide and help ultimately help youth meet, reach their full potential. The benefits for the summer program for organizations is that they can apply using one application to multiple grants. So that saves them a lot of time and capacity. In addition, they have fair options, fair access to all of the funding that's available. In summer 2022, there had, in the Summer Funding Collaborative, there's $5 million available with BCYF contributing $2 million. So it's really important to us that we exceed um, what we were able to do this year as the need is great. There was about $15 million in request to the Summer Funding Collaborative this year. So this um, elevation of our gift, um, of our support of $2.5 million will absolutely be necessary, needed, and um, utilized. So this continuing to invest in, um, in the Summer Funding Collaborative is our first um, decision around grant making. Now, let's, next, I'd like to dive into the Grassroots Fund. Next slide, please. So it's important to kind of put the grassroots fund into context. We know that um, we will be awarding approximately $5 million investing that into Baltimore's youth serving grassroots organizations. And the national context for this um, is that only 2% of philanthropic dollars are given to grassroots organizations nationally every year, despite ongoing research that demonstrates that grassroots organizations often have the most potent community solutions. So despite that deep knowledge and research, this trend of disengagement with grassroots organizations persists nationally. The BCYF Grassroots Fund seeks to address the traditional gaps in Baltimore's funding landscape that disadvantage grassroots organizations. We'll be providing unrestricted funding for grassroots Baltimore-based youth serving organizations in support of their overall mission. In addition to financial support, organizations will also be awarded a grant from the Grassroots Fund, which includes rigorous and tailored personalized technical assistance and capacity building to help them sustain their work and of course, continue help it to continue to grow and elevate. I want to just reiterate that BCYF Inc., this is our first grant cycle. So this is a pilot, yes, for BCYF Inc., which is a new entity. We have a new application. We have new staff. We have new technology tools. So we're very much thinking of this as a pilot as we move forward. Next slide, please. We are defining grassroots organizations as community accountable organizations with an annual operating budget of $250,000 or less. Also, of course, it's important for us to mention that the fund will prioritize organizations that are led by Black, Brown, Indigenous, and Asian people. So as uh, your constituents reach out and have questions about the fund, we do have a pretty simple eligibility quiz to help folks understand if their organizations and work are eligible for the grassroots fund. Folks should apply if their organization is Baltimore City-based, and serve children and youth ages 24 years and, old and under. They should apply if the organization is also a Maryland 501c3 organization 
or has a confirmed fiscal sponsorship. And finally, of course, they should apply if their budget also, in addition to those other two criteria, they also have a budget of $250,000 or less. And that's an overall organization budget. Next slide, please. So in terms of, I told you we have a lot of new tools and our application is one of those new tools. So on March 15th, which is just five days from now, we will publish a new expanded request for proposals that includes a grant application workbook that will allow um, applicants to begin to complete their grant application that day in that workbook an application checklist, and also the full overview of all the policies and procedures for managing a BCYF grant award. So this new published document will be, of course, available on all of our social media platforms, and a lot of our partners will share it as well. And it will be available online. Next slide, please. We are anticipating, again, between 30 and 35 grant awards, and the grant awards are multi-year grants multi-year unrestricted grants of $150,000 total. So that equates to a $50,000 a year grant award for three years. The spring cycle will accept and review all applications from all eligible organizations, and that's important to note. And also, um, we'll also be providing robust technical assistance for applicants, which I will dive into in just a moment as well. So again, these are three-year, multi-year grants totaling $150,000 over the course of three years. Um, the grants are payable in equal installments over three years. And operating on a multi-year grant cycle is a really important equitable strategy to support grassroots organizations so that they can really focus on building capacity and also um, it positions them for success in terms of planning and preparation for the next three years. Next slide, please. So we will be offering a wide range of pre-application technical assistance over the next eight weeks. So the grant application will be dispersed on March 15th and folks can begin to fill that out. Our grant application online portal, which is a new technology tool for us, will open on April 15th and folks can just start to copy and paste their responses right into the online portal. And that portal will close on May 15th. So people have eight weeks to prepare their grant application. We want to be able to, of course, provide as much support as we can. So we are offering well over 120 hours of free pre-application technical assistance offered in a wide range of formats. So virtual, in-person offerings. We also have large group offerings, small group appointments, one-on-one -on -one sessions. We even have an asynchronous format so folks can email questions that they may not feel comfortable asking in person. The support topics will cover grant writing basics, program development, budgeting, reporting, and then as we get closer to the closing of the grant portal, we'll start to offer more opportunities for folks on Saturdays to drop in and get application support. We have some bring your own application, some B BYOA um, sessions where you can bring your application and get support from a really well seasoned team of technical assistance providers. We'll also be offering technical support as we do have a new online grant portal. We want to make sure that folks feel um, that they have the support they need to access that, um, that application. In addition, we'll also be translating the application into um, our four top languages here in Baltimore City, Spanish, French, Chinese, and Korean. A full calendar of events will be available for review and folks can begin registering for these events starting March 15th. So that's really the go day for us. The RFP will be ready and that full calendar of eight weeks of free pre-application technical assistance. Next slide, please. Now, it's also important for me to mention and to re just remind this, um, this committee, this council tonight about the participatory grant making. So BCYF is using participatory grant making, which still in philanthropy is still pretty innovative and new, this idea of opening up the decision making to the community. So applicants, folks can begin to apply to be on the grant review panel, okay? Um, and those applications will open on March 18th. You should apply if you are a resident um, of the Baltimore area. And you and you have experience designing or operating youth programs. 
And in addition, you're familiar with Baltimore's youth service infrastructure and the landscape here in Baltimore City. So that open call will be open to the public on March 18th, and then we're excited to announce um, that first panel. Um, I do think it's important for us to mention, just in the name of equity, everyone, of course, will be compensated for their time. There are some required trainings that are a part of this process, um, and we look forward to having community members serving in this way to make sure that we are, of course, funding the organizations that align with the priorities of Baltimore community. Next slide, please. So just a short overview of the Grassroots Fund, which is, of course, <laughs> One of the most exciting things to happen for us in the next in the next eight weeks is, of course, dispersing $5 million in direct direct grants to Baltimore City organizations. So that public announcement about the grassroots fund did go out on March 4th. And then March 15th, the RFP, the request for proposals in its expanded form. So it includes this application workbook so folks can get started right away. And also all of the grant management um, policies and procedures so that folks can know exactly what it's like to take on these kinds of quasi public funds um, as they begin to prepare their application. We are having a kickoff event virtually on March 17th, and that's an opportunity to meet some of the technical assistance providers. I'll be there to talk about the fund, and of course, we'll have lots of time for question and answer. On April 15th, the online grant, grant portal will open to start receiving applications. And again, folks will be able just to copy and paste their responses right into that grant um, portal and right into that online application. May 15th, the portal will close, and in August, we will dispense this letters of decision um, to all applicants. So every applicant, of course, will be contacted so that they know exactly the status of their grant. And so in August, we'll be able to make that announcement, again, of $5 million, approximately $5 million, um, million dollars in grant awards to Baltimore's youth sector. And finally, just to close out, just a short update. Next slide, please. On our other highest priority at BCYF, which is building our team. So um, I have started, I think I'm in my, I think I'm in my seventh week um, here at BCYF, which is really exciting. And it's been really incredible to see the work and the infrastructure that's built. I'm not walking into um, an empty space, metaphorically. There's a lot of work that has gone, we've come before me from our transition staff and our, from our transition board that has really set us up for success so we can take off running. And I hope that's very clear in the fact that seven weeks in and we've got, you know, the grassroots fund rocking and rolling, getting ready to launch next week. So we still have some open positions, of course. We're, we are prioritizing hiring our executive leadership team. Next slide, please. And a few key administrative and finance positions. And our goal is to have all of these positions filled by July 1. So we are hiring a vice president of strategic investments who will run the grant making arm of BCYF, a vice president of finance and administration, a vice president of strategic partnerships and community engagement, and a vice pre president of learning, evaluation, and data management. And so those four individuals and myself will make up that executive leadership team, and then we'll be, we'll begin to populate the rest of the positions that are underneath each of these functions and departments. Next slide, please. So again, I just want to thank you all for your time. I'm here to answer questions. Um, and to, of course, I just want to extend a deep round of gratitude to all of the work that's come before. So BCYF, as you know, took a step back to build the infrastructure and the organization so that the organization could be successful. As the new president, I cannot be more grateful that um, there's so much infrastructure thinking, planning, and preparation to build and stand an organization on its feet has taken place before my arrival. I feel excited about the work that's to come and ready to support the folks in our community who are making transform transformative opportunities available to Baltimore City's youth. Thank you. Well, thank you, Ms. Lee. First of all, I want to say welcome. Um, I want, I'm glad to see your commitment here for the Baltimore City Children and Youth Fund. With your experience, you could have been somewhere else doing this or take your experience other places. Again, welcome and look thank forward so to much, working Kelsey. with you. Thank you also, so for a starter, I want to thank Dave on love because, you know, he, he done done a yeoman's job, you know, and 
people that work under you, but I have to give you some, give you the yeoman's job. You did a great job with this. You held it together to this point. So I want to personally thank you and, and how you kept this leadership, kept this going to this point. So thank you for your leadership also. I appreciate um, that. Um, I have, let me start with the two two questions and to the council uh, committee members, we're going to do two questions first round. And Ms. Lee, I'm glad you talked about technical assistance, and that's always was there when Davon and them were run in charge. I, I have a question. A lot of nonprofits did not receive any funding through this um, the U fund. Um, and we know for a fact they're the ones that, that do the work, been doing the work in this community. So did you ever get a chance to look at those organizations that never got a chance or never got funded but needed some additional technical assistance so in this next round, they will be able to um, get some funding. And the second one is there was an organization who was running some of the nonprofits and found out they weren't in good standing. And a lot of those nonprofits now just had to go out of business because the funding that was given to this other organization, they almost went out of business. So are we looking at that? Also about the good stand, making sure people are in good stands in terms of um, making sure that doesn't happen again. Sure, I can answer the easiest question first. And <laughs> both and, easy for you. <laughs> Perfect. And um, so, in terms of good standing with the state of Maryland, that is that good standing certificate is a requirement to be uploaded um, as a part of um, that confirmation of nonprofit status. So our nonprofit organizations will upload their most recent 990 and their certificate of good standing to show that they are a Maryland nonprofit and that they also are in good standing with the state. And our fiscal sponsor partners will be required to do the same thing. Of course, um, uh, they'll upload their most recent 990 in addition to that confirmation letter saying that they have a fiscal sponsorship relationship, but we'll also require that certificate of good standing from the fiscal sponsor. So that hopefully will make sure that all of that eligibility is a, that folks are aware of their eligibility, right? If you don't have a certificate, you won't be able to complete the application. And um, there are some other pieces I would say on the flip side of that in terms of technical assistance, next steps, if, if you're not eligible, right? Because you're not in good standing. I, I can talk about that in a moment too. Um, but that will help to make sure that everyone is in good standing and aware of their standing before they apply. Now, in terms of organizations that did not receive funding, there's a few things. Um, of course, we want to fund everybody. Um, we know, um, I know personally, and I know that you all know, that there are hundreds, hundreds of opportunities um, for Baltimore's young people to build community and space and thrive in out of school time and in school time spaces here in Baltimore City. We have um, adults here in the city and youth who are all about youth development and doing it in culturally responsive ways and effective ways. We wanna fund everyone. <laughs> so we also want to make sure that BCUF is not seen as just an ATM. We are a resource to the city and to all folks who are doing this work and so the grant funding is one way to engage with us, but there's also other ways to elevate the capacity of your organization and to drive improvement, not just with the funding. So I know the funding dollars are important because again, I've worked in the, in, in the grassroots sector and I understand how important it is to get those material resources. And we will be making sure that we have a process to get those resources out to folks. But it's also important that that um, applicant who applies and doesn't have the good standing with the state, is it a dead end for them? No, BCYF is still here to engage with folks, to help folks along, to learn more about the sector, to serve it better, and then to share all of our learnings with all of the other philanthropic partners we have in the city so that we can create a more vibrant grassroots sector. So we really wanna encourage folks to think, start to understand, and, and as we roll out the technical assistance that we have planned for next year, I think folks will start to see that there's lots of ways for organizations to engage with BCYF. And the funding is one way, and there are other ways that are very valuable to those organizations. And we will learn more about the sector and be able to serve them better as well. So I hope that answers that. Yes, thank you, thank you. Um, I also wanna acknowledge Councilwoman Porter from the TIF District and member of the committee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll start off, I, you answered my two questions, so I'm gonna start off with our 
Vice President of Baltimore City Council, Councilman Middleton from the 6th District. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I don't really have a question. I, I think that the presentation was just right on point. Number one, I, I want to uh, congratulate you, Ms. Lee, as the, the, the first president taking on this uh, organization. You're, I feel your enthusiasm as you were uh, doing your presentation. So I'm excited for you and your team. And um, uh, Davon, you have definitely uh, been on point and uh, just very supportive of this organization. And um, you have been there just um, all the time. So appreciate your your continued efforts. And th this is just going to be a wonderful experience. I can feel it for our young people. And um, I had a chance to look at your website. I think it's on hands on. So committee members, if you haven't had a chance to look, go through their website, go to their website. Everything is on there and it's pieced just wonderfully. So I think you're really off to a great start. My only question, I guess, or comment, uh, added comment would be, um, it, please give us or send us flyers and things where we can also advertise this through our, through you know, through our networks and newsletters and things that we do on the council. So, so thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and thank you again, uh, Ms. Lee. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate thank it. you, um, Vice President. I hope this um, hearing go the same way pretty fast. You know, so thank you for your short answers. Um, my mother always told me ladies first, so I'm going to go over to Councilwoman Porter. Thank you. <laughs> your two questions. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. My only, my only question, um, and it's more of a comment. I know um, from the last hearing, um, I spoke about sustainability metrics um, for grantees, um, current grantees, and past grantees, um, with how one they're faring with regards to their organization in relation to their overall mission and their work that was reflected for the Baltimore City um, Youth Fund. Um, have you all had any updates related to that? Have there been any successful spotlights that can be um, can be studied uh, with regard to technical assistance that can be amplified amongst other organizations? I know that we are in the middle of figuring that out. So we have, you know, our learning and our annual report will be finalized in the coming weeks. I think we've got about more, maybe eight weeks to go. And so there we'll be able to see some of those success stories from that first round of grantees. Um, and I'll also say that in the coming weeks, another piece for us is to think specifically about sustainability of these grassroots organizations and what our policies will be um, so that folks aren't reaching, you know, a financial cliff, right? So mm -hmm. CYF is absolutely committed to uh, part of the reason why we're dispensing $5 million directly and taking on about 30 to 35 grantees is because we want to also, we're in a pilot phase. <laughs> and so we want to make sure that we're able to support these grantees through the process in such a way that they are able to leverage the cult, the, all of the knowledge that we have at BCYF. That's also a resource to them as well. So, you know, if we think of a foundation as a place where resources are pooled and, and shared, the knowledge and expertise from the that VP executive suite and that uh, uh, that all those folks that I just shared knowledge we have to share and of course our range of consultants folks like Davon Love right mm -hmm. um, that is another pooled resource that's available to these grantees so we will be thinking about that in the coming weeks as we think about ways to transition folks from a three year grant cycle into what happens next so that's definitely on our mind thank you so much for bringing that up. Thank you so much, Ms. Lee, and you hit on a number of, of points that I, I think are, are pivotal, not only um, from an organizational perspective, but also from just a, a larger um, city of Baltimore perspective, enhancing and increasing our, our economy um, here for small business organizations. And many of the things you just mentioned are opportunities that can not only connect some of these um, uh, organ this, the organizations to um, different funding sources within the philanthropic community, but it can also diversify um, their, it can also diversify their funds as well to not only include the philanthropic sector, but also for-profit sector as well. So Absolutely. thank you so much. And I, I congratulate yeah. um, you um, and uh, Mr. Love um, on a successful, successful launch and presentation today. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councilwoman Porter. Um, Councilman Glover, you have any questions or comments? That was the time, Mr. Chair. Been here, I'm sorry. No, none at the time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, Councilman Bullock, do you have any questions or comments? So not not a question, but yes, a comment. So I'll sound like a broken record here, but again, uh Davon Love, uh Ms. Lee, again, uh Davon, you've been you know in the field for many years, uh beating this drum. So glad to see it come to fruition. Um, and then and Ms. Lee, again, just glad to have you on board. I also did like the presentation. I think one of the issues or one of the things that came up before is around transparency. And I'm glad you talked about who's on the board and, and even look at the board. I mean, there's some folks who are known quantities in the city. So I think they're going to do an excellent job. So very encouraged about that. Also, just looking at how um, the youth fund is, is growing, not just financially, but also in terms of the work that it does. And so I'm also glad to hear you talk about the sustainability of organizations, right? That yes, we want them to uh, to get assistance. We also want them to grow and thrive and be able to fly on their own. So I'm glad that you you touched upon that point too. So I share the same excitement uh, that Vice President shared. And so again, just thank you for the work you're doing. Again, it's, it's really important uh, for our young people and particularly emphasize the people of color and folks who have not gotten these kinds of resources in the past. So again, just thank you for this very important work. Thank you so much. Good councilman. Um... Councilman Torrance, you have any comments or questions? I'm trying not to follow my colleagues with the same amount of cool as um, Davon, but I will say that this is a yeoman's work, um, especially with helping organizations in my district alone with finding grant funding, staying sustainable. I'm encouraged, let me put that up, that we have a multi-year grant at this time. Um, for many of us who have tried to get funding for organizations that year by year instability, leads to lack of con continuity and programming, lack of staffing. And this allows us to actually study the results in the interventions that we put in place for these organizations to grow and actually have measurable actual um, outcomes for them as well. And, I, and I'm proud of that, but also this is a great opportunity for them to use this as a leverage to gain additional access to funding. And that's one of the things that we kind of hit, did not hit the head on at first in, in transparency is that we did not have enough seed money or enough investment to spur investment in these organizations. And I'm proud of that right now. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Councilman C. Cohen from the first district, any questions or comments? Yes, sir. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, Want to reiterate all my colleagues, congratulations to Ms. Lee. Welcome aboard. Um, hope you're, Hope you're ready. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a ride, but I think it's gonna be a really good one. And we're excited to have you and your leadership um, in place. Also, want to echo the props to Davon because he has been on this and has been consistent and carrying something this complex over multiple years with all the competing constituencies and energy is hard and. You know, props to you for doing it and for staying consistent. Um, so one thing that I was particularly glad to hear about um, was around the youth participation in the grant making. Mm -hmm. uh, that was something that when we were uh, writing and passing this bill that I had pushed really, really hard for. And um, Davon and I had some really good conversations early on about the need for young people to not just participate but to really develop the skills to become philanthropists and to understand um, grant making and to do it through a lens of equity and really hopefully create the next generation of philanthropists in our city um, that we're really building up um, so i wanted to know a little bit more about what that piece looks like and what the um training what the support is for the young people so that they can really be part of this process moving forward so i can i can handle that um so the avis ransom institute um we launched it back in uh the summer of 21. Um, right now we have five students um that a that range in age between I think 20 to 24 
or 25 maybe 24 and so um and so we meet every week on thursdays we actually met today um earlier and so like for instance the assignment today was for them one of the assignments for today was for them to read the ordinance and become familiar um dorcas gilmore who's general counsel for the youth fund um has done three sessions with them on board service so a similar kind of presentation you give to people that want to serve on the board in terms of understanding conflicts of interest what it means to have fully shared responsibility you know, so it was a three part series where the students participated in that. Um, so it's a wide range. It's a very, um, we have a youth development framework that kind of guides the approach up to youth development that both we as an institution um, engage in and that we encourage others to engage in that's rooted um, in cultural response to this racial equity, um, black liberation. And so, um, so yeah, that's really the nature um, of the training um, in short. Uh, but again, we have, you know, written documents that talk about, um, that describe um, the, the nature of the program. Um, and the and the five uh, folks that we have, uh, you know, a couple of them have already participated in some board activities. Um, so they're excited about, uh, you know, getting involved. We actually are part of what they did today. The ones that actually participated in some previous board activities were debriefing the others about what they got, you know, from being on the board. So they're really excited. And based, you know, as you referenced the conversation you and I had um, in the beginning of all this, um, I'm actually very satisfied um, with the way that the young people both are being trained, applying it so that when they do serve on the board, again, they're just not, you know, token young people that are just there. Like they have wrong, strong opinions and they know enough to be able to actually participate in substantive ways. And so we're really pleased with that. If 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 I can say one other thing um, in reference to a comment that was made before, just about organizations being funded, I just want um, to ask um, this council, this committee, and the full council, because as was mentioned in previous hearings, um, in the first grant cycle um, before uh, BCYF Inc. was an official entity, there were seventy-five billion dollars worth of requests for about less than ten billion dollars that were given out. For the summer funding collaborative, as um, you know, Ms. Lee mentioned, there was 15 or 14 million dollars worth of requests for a five million dollar pot. Um, and so I just wanted to raise that as you talk to your constituents, you know, you're gonna have people that apply for it. I think it's gonna be really important, both for those who are applying, but also folks that you're engaged with in philanthropy, um, to understand that it's important, not just for the youth fund to fund these grassroots organizations, but it's important for the larger philanthropic landscape to also invest in these organizations as well. Um, and we hope that that's a message that you all can carry to support the work that the youth fund is trying to do. Great. Um, no, it's really good to hear uh, about the young people and would love to um, support in any way I can. And, um, and, and they're getting paid? They are. Great. Um, yeah. Awesome. Perfect. Second question for me, um, you had mentioned about the the piece around participatory budgeting, which again I think is is really innovative and is something that um, you know I know we've taken a few looks at and have had some starts and stops, but I think you know again keeping with the spirit of you know when when this legislation was written um, under the former mayor slash president, um, you know I know he and his staff really had championed. Uh, just making sure that, you know, community voice really informed throughout. Can you speak a little more deeply about that piece and what it's going to look like in practice to have the public um, participate in grant making? So a reflection, um, and I may have mentioned this at the last hearing, a reflection that we've had within the team of the youth fund and then certainly with alicia um when she you know came on board last time with the with the first grant review process so is you know just to be frank there was a lot of politics with that like people who served on that grant review team certainly felt a lot of pressure you know certainly understood that there were a lot of people watching the decisions they were making um and again given just the fact that there's limited resources and as you mentioned the competing constituencies you know there's a lot that we reflected on in terms of what is the best practice. And so there are a couple of things just in, re in response to your question I want to bring to the council's attention. The first is that we want to look 
for in terms of the grant reviewers that was mentioned in the presentation, um, we want it to be a much more collaborative process between those that are engaged in the grant reviewers and our team, right? Um, we want, and, and as we did previously, we had grant viewers from a variety of different walks of life, but this time we're actually gonna have time to really talk to the grant reviewers and do training such that, um, you know, there's just a whole lot more continuity, right? Both internally and externally in terms of how decisions are made. Lastly, um, as you'll see, you know, the ordinance, it talks about a needs assessment that's required every three years. We did back in 2018, a series of community design sessions that I think a few of you were present for. And so we're looking to do a version of a, of a public assembly, which would constitute the, the, the vehicle for getting the information for a needs assessment. And in that, um, the idea is that, that the document that is produced from that would also be a guide that would be used in future grant cycles, both by grant reviewers and the team to determine the kind of priorities to be funded. So it's the, it's it, that's a, an additional way for the community to have a say in the priorities of the youth fund is based on the feedback that comes uh, from the public assembly structure. Um, and so, so a collaborative process between the information gathered there, in addition to working in collaboration with grant reviewers, um, but again, you know, have expertise that understand the landscape and again, just have more time to do the work necessary to train them and the perspective that the youth fund carries and just, you know, being able to have the continuity. Gotcha. That, that all sounds, sounds good. Um, you know, I'll always nuanced and complicated to try to pull off, but, um, sounds like a good framework. Um, appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I do just want to lift up the former mayor um, whose, whose bill this was, Mayor Young, and especially his staff, Lester Davis, who just put an enormous amount of energy into making this a reality. So wanna appreciate them as well. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councilman. I also wanna uh, echo, uh, this was one of former president for um, Mayor uh, Jack Young's baby. He took this thing and he drove it home. So we would not have this without less than his staff. I don't want to echo that. But I wanted to, for Ms. Lee or for Dave on, um, will there be some technical assistance in advance for those nonprofits? Let's say you're going to open up, I'm talking about next year though. You're going to open up, let's say March of next year for um, application to portal. Will there be some technical assistance in advance for those organizations? So when they get to that, portal that day is open that they won't get to that point and then when they don't get selected it's because they could have maybe get, had some technical assistance in advance absolutely absolutely so this year this this um the everything that's happening in this pilot phase is in the spirit of everything we want to happen in the future but in the future we have more time so this robust you know these 120 hours of technical assistance it's going to be offered in a shorter amount of time, but that idea of the robust nature, um, covering all the topics, really meeting people where they are, helping them to elevate their skills and practices over time, that's the, that's the nature and um, in terms of the, the philosophy that kind of is girding that. That's why that's happening. So the answer is absolutely yes. And right around August 1st, when we also publish the decision letters to folks, we'll also be ready at that time to publish our series we have some really exciting things coming around what our um our technical assistance will look like it's starting to take a dip it's going to take a different shape and this is also because of my education background okay so thinking about building cohorts of learning communities of learning really driving people um to um to materialize some skills and working with them over time we're building some new pathways in bcyf for that learning to take place so folks can see their progress and make those assessments as they go so we're really we're we're building those pieces out we've had really great technical assistance for the last two to three years and i would say it's been excellent and then we're launching off of that to a next level so the answer is yes people will not have to wait until eight weeks before the grant portal opens next year to start the process this is something we're thinking of year round as the way that we serve organizations in the city Thank you. That's so wonderful to hear. I'm really excited about hearing that because it, it gives everybody opportunity when they get to the portal and apply 
it already has some advanced technical systems to make them successful. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, Ms. Magui, do we have any call-ins? For all attendees, if you would like to testify, could you please use the raise hand function? I'm going to start with the call-in user. Would you like to testify? That concludes public testimony, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I believe Vice President Middleton, did you have your hand up? Okay. All right. Well, that concludes the public testimony. I personally, uh, um, uh, Davon, I, I only know how to say this, but your leadership on this and getting to this point has never been unnoticed. So I want to thank you for your leadership and staff. You, you, you did a wonderful job and you got young people at the table because a lot of times we select what we want them to have. They get an opportunity to sit at the table and say, is this what we want? So I really admire you bringing them young people along because one day they're going to be in your seat. They're going to be in my seat. They're going to be in Miss Lee's seat, but they can't be there if we don't give them the opportunity to learn and make those kind of decisions that they like to see in their community. So thank you. And Miss Lee. Thank you. I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm excited about this whole piece. I mean, even with the, the advanced technical assistance and one piece I like about you mentioned about the three year, um, once they apply, they don't have to keep coming back over and over. They get that three year funding. That is, I mean, Davon know <laughs> it's much easier, you know, and, and people can look at the funding and they can take that and go to other places to say, hey, we got $50,000. Can you match or can we you get some more money from other locations? So that was really important to me. Um, I don't know. I'm like my colleagues. This is this is wonderful. And, and Ms. Lee, again, welcome. And I look forward to work with you and seeing this this uh, youth fund really move forward with our young people, but making sure we see it working inside these communities that where the, where the work need to be done, most important. So I want to just say I thank everybody for attending. This hearing, this hearing has been recessed. Thank you and everybody have a great evening. Thank you.